What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the SUP Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Chris Cheney. Across from me virtually, I have my two partners in crime, my podcast guys. We got Luke Trevisi in one of my corners. What's up, buddy? What's up, my guys? <laughs> Chilling. All right. And then below me, we Sorry, have. That was impressive. <laughs> that was, uh, you, just, you pulled a Cheney right in the beginning there, buddy. And then uh, Lawrence yeah. Deloach. What's up, buddy? What's up, bro? <laughs> The total opposite types of intros. Uh, but here we are, yeah. guys. We are um, episode 144. And uh, let's just get right into it, man. I want to talk about these Mariah Carey uh, box logo tees. It was a hot oh, topic yeah. last week. Um, Luke got it right up there. These are all the winter yeah. tees that uh, Supreme dropped Thursday. And look, yeah, you know right what? Here. I think I hit you guys in the group chat that we got. And said that I was kind of disappointed in the Mariah Carey tees. Yeah, but then you did uh, say you. Would, yeah, no, go, go, go. Yeah, you did say you were like a little disappointed when uh, when you first saw them. But you know what? I went and backtracked just because we were talking about box logos, tees in general. We we're maybe debating about ranking them, just talking about like the best ones that have occurred over the years. And looking at the old ones, then this one, I'm kind of like less mad at it. Like this is actually pretty good. I, I imagine like a reef. Or something, I wanted a little more Christmas in there, like aside from her wearing a Santa outfit. But, like, you know, I'm kind of not mad. I kind of want to get your guys' opinion on it. Nah, bro. When I saw this, I was like, this is right up Supreme's alley, honestly. I just, I mean, she didn't have any Supreme wear on her, which was, like, a little weird. But besides that, it, it feels, like, right on par with everything else. Yeah, I, I thought it was uh... – uh, actually, I, I actually kind of did a 180 on the tee. At first, I was like, ah, but then, you know, something turned on me, and I was like, you know what? This isn't actually that bad of a tee. It's definitely – I think it's going to be coveted down, years down the line. It, yeah. it definitely has that, like, if, if you didn't get it and, and you see the prices right now, which, are, which aren't bad, uh, and if you want it, I think you should grab it now because I feel like in, like, a year and a half or two, it's going to be one of those pieces that you're like – Fuck man, I the price on it is a little too much for for a t shirt. So um, you managed to get one, Lawrence, yeah, right? I, yeah, actually, I was able to get a, a medium and white, which obviously I, I'm not a medium boy. Uh, <laughs> so I'm looking to, and I, I'm not a big white tee uh, fan. I think that was the worst color, uh, white. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to either like just buy the black and extra large and uh and then like resell the other one even though the price diff there's a price difference or see if i could just straight up trade and uh and get a black xl for uh for my my for my body for the so body you like yeah. the black the best i'm i'm a big fan of when i get a supreme t-shirt it's usually in black there's on i can there's only a couple instances of off, off my hand where i could say um where I can say that I was, uh, I've, I purchased a t-shirt in a different color that wasn't black for Supreme. I think I, the green of this is the strongest ooh. just because it ties the Christmas thing in there, you know? Nah, I like the pink. The pink is like, listen, I'm going to Do they have all soft. the colors in one photo on here, Luke? About it? Here, let me check. Give me one second. I like the green. The green is the one that kind of convinced me because it's just like, you know, you have the her in the red, the green, and then I like the signature uh, on it. Looking back, like, that's one of the better signature photo tees. Mm -hmm. When they managed to get someone to, you know, do a little John Hancock on it, I'm like, yeah, that's nice. And, but with hers, it's like kind of, you know, because it's like the Merry Christmas. It's like, it's the whole thing. I like that. Let me see. I can only find it on uh, StockX right now. Okay. But they are here. Hold on. Let me show Black, you. Black, white, green, and pink, um, right? Yeah, it's a – and then they called it like a, a pinker – like it's like a pink purple or a light purple is what they call it. Yeah. Bro, the, I, I'm, I'm all in on this one. This one I like a lot. I'm it's with you like, on that. Listen, I'm, I'm going to be a soft boy. I'm, I'm going to wear a Mariah tee. I'm going to go all in on it. <laughs> I'm going to wear a color that Mariah would approve. You feel me? See, the, the pine is good, too, yeah. Like, I, I think you get into your, like, I do like the, the pine. I do like the purplish, pinkish uh, color. But I, once again, when it comes to, like, photo tees, I just like my murdered-out black <laughs> joint. 
See, I'm not mad at this either because it really does like it really displays like the 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 signature like and the like the gold font is really nice on it. I'm, yeah, I'm no, the, the gold like, the gold print instead of like the black is also nice. It makes it pop, especially on the edges. You kind of like, ooh, what's that? Like the it being off yeah. the square kind of like pulls you in, but. You know, just aside from this photo, T, right? So, like, you know, Lawrence, like you said, this is going to be one of the most coveted, you think, in years to come. I uh, would tend to agree. I think that Mariah Carey is, like, this weird entity that, like, she gets a lot of passes on weird shit. Like, she's had such an illustrious queer career, but, like, had, like, weird sectors. But, like, she still manages to, like, retain popularity and integrity. Um, but, I mean, like, going back to, the, all the like, all the box logos. I got a list of top five to me. I know I spoiled last week with saying the prodigy was always going to be my number one, but I don't know if you guys like looked back at all, but I have five. If you guys want to go through me, maybe your top ones. Sure. Lead, lead the way, brother. Mm -hmm. um, now I will admit it's very rap heavy just cause that's how not only, you know, skating <laughs> brought me here, but also hip hop. So uh, prodigy is my number one, which was 2011. The Ray and Ghost is a mm -hmm. classic one. I think that was the first, like, real rap one. That was 05. Yeah, and then, 2005, yeah. Yeah. Then next year, Dipset carried it, which I think helped get it, like, really over the hump. I think, like, Ray and Ghost brought him up to attention, and then Dipset really, like, took him over, going, like, yeah, no, guys, this is some, this is some shit. So that was 06. And then four, I put Kermit, just because, like, out of all the photo tees, like, that one's, like, this weird outlier. And then... um. Yeah. I was going to say Kate Moss, but I kind of want to give credit to that 10th anniversary tee where they redid the original fake one. That was like 04. Yeah. The 10th anniversary, okay. whatever it was, where they took that original fake that he got in trouble for, and then they redid it. Ooh. My favorite's the Tyson one. Tyson one is by far my favorite, just because of like all of yeah. like the, you know, at the time, it was just so it's so crazy to me that like that Mike Tyson was getting a supreme tea. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, Raekwon. That that Ray, right, right, Ray, Ray, yeah. Ray is a, mm -hmm. it's one of the best ones. Uh, same thing with Dipset. It's hard to it, those two are like iconic and Kermit as well. Like there's like I feel like as we like those are like the like the first gen type shit to me. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Like in terms of photo tees. Yeah. And as we get into like the 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 newer ones, like the Gucci, Gucci Mane, and the Nas joints, like the Morrissey's, like they, to me, these are the those are iconic dog. Ray, you know what I mean? And was that Ghost? Mm -hmm. you, yeah, know, you know what I mean? So it, it's yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like it's like it's like it's just icon. Those are like fire, bro. Neil, even Neil Young, dude, that shit was amazing too. Jim Morrissey. I mean, like the they Neil have Young classic. Like wild. any photo tee is really gonna hit. But yeah, that that one right there, that middle one is the one I was talking about for the Kate Moss. That one. The, the yeah, I see it. So that's what I'm saying. It's like like they're iconic in their own right. You know what I mean? But like it, it kind of is like what you like on your own, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? So. I don't know. Um, I, I, they... I did kind of want to, not to cut you off, L. I did kind of want to throw an honorable mention, cause, but we didn't get it. But I would have been real hype if that Chief Keef T actually came out. Oh, oh the one that uh, heard oh. you with the, the, the art Chicago gallery type shit or whatever. Yeah, we got yeah, teased yeah, about I was... that. I, we, I don't think anyone ever saw a sample of that. I'm not sure if it actually came out. There was something that happened where like some weird thing got sold from that whole uh, event. But... Uh, that photo tee would have been the first photo tee where the person wearing the box logo wasn't a red box. That would have been the Pan African one. Yeah. Yeah. I was super stoked this on that. Right here. For the for the viewers who need a visual. For the listeners out, who need a listen. Yeah, what shout out to our <laughs> YouTube viewership, listenership. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that would have been the one um, to me. Actually, that probably would have been my number one, but just because of the storytelling of all that thing, like, you know, Chicago, Drill, Virgil, that just Chicago in general, you know what I mean? But look at how excited this white kid is about it. Man, he is <laughs> hype. <laughs> yes, everything I wanted in a supreme tea. I mean, when Travis gets his tea, oh boy. Uh, I don't know if Travis oh. getting supreme tea. Let's not, let's, let's not, let's not uh, add on to 
more hype and things that, that Trav does. <laughs> uh, there, were, there were other drops uh, besides the, the Mariah Carey uh, Christmas tea that came out this week. It was an interesting week to me for Supreme because they dropped their winter tees. They dropped their, uh, their uh, cross box level t-shirt short sleeve. Mm-hmm. Um, we, the first thing I noticed, obviously, is I, uh, resell was a little down on them. Yeah. For a lot of people who, once again, it's starting to feel like, granted, who wants to pay more than $40 for a Supreme tea? But if you missed out, you seem like you were able to get them for under triple digits, which is something, you know, it's a win, I guess. Uh, we also had the Chucky. Uh, what Chucky were, you, what were yeah. your thoughts on the Chuckies? The Chucky to me, because I remember when we were first kind of going over the IPs that were going to be into the, uh, this collection. And I saw Chucky and I was like, who the fuck wants that? But I was thinking of T. The doll is cool, but, like, you got to be a fan of Chucky for this. Like, if you're a Chucky streetwear guy, then, like, yeah, this is a must-have. But, like, anyone who's not in the horror films, I don't know who's copping this. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I'd want this in my house. I don't want to invite hype beast demons into my house. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just, I don't... what's the resale on it right now? It's a good question. Let's see. What are you thinking? I mean, if it's around 300, that kind of makes sense to me, but that's me just kind of like guessing, not really sure. StockX right there. Boom, baby. Oh, two. Boom, right there. 270. Oh, 258. 258 right, I was like not far off. Yeah. If plus tax, it would be like 300. Yeah, if you know, if you man. if you a Chucky guy, like I get it. If not, though, like, I don't know. There's also better horror uh ips to be obsessed with out there <laughs> yes 100 percent. like chucky is a b-grade horror ip get it we should get a what should we get we should get a supreme uh jason machete next year <laughs> that's what we should get a little, little machete with the handle that says supreme on it Boom. um <laughs> I mean, I mean, I must be mad at that, but um, I do kind of want to talk about one thing real quick before we move on from these box logo tees. To me, the weirdest one I know, like, so you like Tyson, me and uh, L were kind of on the rap shit. Um, mm-hmm. The outlier to me is Kermit. Yeah. How do we feel about Kermit's like sort of weird presence in whatever this culture? What do you whatever you want to call this streetwear? hype beast whatever because he just had an adidas come out too or it's like they just posted about it he's gonna get his own adidas hold on i saw that too as you know kermit is a very weird property as far as like it it, it's like he's one of the like he's one of those characters that could kind of like slide into pretty much any he's like very malleable as far as that that's uh as far as like where you could put the the kermit logo and like kind of the face the figure yeah and i guess it makes sense it makes sense a lot like you know he's done a mil- like they've done a million things with kermit so a, an adidas shoe doesn't seem too crazy to me also these i don't like i don't hate this at all no. this is a pretty nice stance very, very simple. simple you know little little hit there i don't know what it says on the back I can't big green that. i think it says this is being green maybe what does it say? It's not easy being green. There we uh, go. Not easy being green. Ah, uh, I see. Huh. I was trying to think of, like, some other weird properties that, like, you know, sneakers have, like, used or, like, you know, clothing brands have used over time. Kermit's a weird one, man. Like, Kermit, because that is like, an adult cartoon character. A Muppet is, like, a, like a, a, a for adults. At this, yeah, I had a, one of my old managers at my job was like a big Jim Henson fan, has like all of this Kermit stuff, loves him to death. I think Kermit is something people grow up on, man, regardless, you know what I mean? So it's not like it's, I know it's an older cartoon, but I think younger kids are still in the the know of Kermit the Frog and Miss Piggy. Like, I think that's, so I think a Kermit shoe isn't like, and a Stan Smith is for it's an it's an older person model. It's not like for some teeny bopper, you know. <laughs> it's not like it's a it's not like it's a Chuck Taylor. Like if it was a Chuck Taylor, I'd be like, ah, I get it. But a Stan Smith is, I feel like younger kids ain't in the fucking Stan Smiths like that, man. 
Yeah, I feel that. They're going to buy the, uh, the McQueens anyway, probably, right? That's the flex. <laughs> That's what kids want. They want the $300, $400 uh, sh- shoe. So Actually, you know what? Side note, not, I don't want to stay on it, but just a side note. The McQueens, I think, are the new Babesters. What? Because when – so when we had Air Force Ones, the, where the real flex was where the Babesters, right? Because that was the same shoe, but just with a more price tag. Yeah. This is a very modern equivalency to that situation. You got the Stan Smiths and then you got the McQueens. Like, it's kind of similar group of kids just with – no, it is. Okay, yeah. The kids who wear the Stan Smiths now are, like, the, the kids that used to wear the Air Force Ones. Okay, yeah. You can – I'm not trying to, like, argue about it, but I'm, it, like, there's a parallel to me there. I don't know. Just a second. No, I see, I see it. I see it. I don't know if I want to believe it is all I'm saying. Lawrence is silent, which means he disagrees. <laughs> um but also let's just talk about also air force one air force one came out friday right the dipset kith yes 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 um now regardless how you feel about ronnie or kith uh this was a great execution getting dipset together in madison square garden shit Fucking was cool nick's colored yep uh so technically new music from dipset we got these freestyles my man cam is getting old but like he's aging well bro yeah i mean he always looks like he's never aged and then also jim is like jimmy he keeps putting out good music too these guys should not be as culturally relevant as they still are what do you mean it, yo I, you know what's funny <laughs> when i it's so funny when i when, first off i i, I wanted the kiff uh the, the air force the nick air force ones right i wanted those yeah. shits right yeah but what it did was it just made me go back down memory lane to dipset and cam and like the movement that these dudes had and it's so funny i listened to i just i just was listening to like uh uh diplomatic immunity and come home with me i like you know i listened to all that shit because of this like campaign and i really said to myself god damn these guys were so relevantly important to new york city and then the culture in general like when when I say granted as in terms of a national level, obviously they weren't as big as G Unit, but yeah. what they what Cam and Jim and and Jewels and like Har- like how they put Harlem like you know had Harlem like revving and buzzing and shit, like nah, I, I, like I, you gotta respect what they did for the culture. Of course, general. I'm yeah. definitely not trying to take anything away from them. It's just like because everyone that everyone thinks people in New York dress like Dipset. <laughs> No, 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 no. People from Harlem dress like Dipset. No, yeah. yeah, I agree with you. But outside of in the outside world, me being from the outside world, Dipset is like a representation of what New York dresses. When you get closer to the heart of the sort, like when you get closer to the city. Once I moved here, I was like, oh, it's Harlem shit. You know what I mean? Like I, I learned a little bit as a, as I lived here. I figured out like. I knew what the word uptown was, but I didn't know what uptown was. You know what I mean? I knew people referred mm. to Air Force Ones as uptowns. I didn't know they were talking about uptown Manhattan, talking speaking Harlem. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there's like a cultural thing that you two are probably much closer to than the rest of the world. The rest of the world thinks that New York dresses like Dipset. That's how crazy these guys were in influence for New York City. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the podcast, we just got Chris Cheney on the podcast admitting that he thinks everybody dresses like Dipset for a very long time. I, I thought New York dressed like Dipset. <laughs> I th- most of the world thought that too. They still think that. If once until they get here and they learn enough, they realize that. But like outside looking in, you're like, oh, sh- everyone de- dresses like Dipset. That's actually true. I was in uh, I was in the t- my my uh, old comic book store in Times Square, and a French guy came up to me and was like, oh, why you know where are uptowns? Where are the uptowns? Oh, no, Luke, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> where are your Air Force Ones? <laughs> <laughs> there was no French guy that came up to you and said that. You have nowhere Air Force One. <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I uh, mean, this is a great, this is a great collab, like collaboration, though. I love everything from this. Yeah, the rollout was great. I wish I got a chance. Uh, I wish I was able to get these sneakers, but I just I, I saw everything that everybody was going through in the Discord, and I was like, "Dog, I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna deal with this shit right now." Luke, you, them- I mean, so you want it, L? You said you want it. Oh, I wanted them. I definitely. I thought they were really. And and I'm and to be honest with you, I don't really get that excited for Air Force Ones, but I was like, I can do those. Those are beautiful. Mm-hmm. No, these are beautiful. I Same. mean, what did you guys think of the freestyles? Did you get a chance to listen to them? No. I did. I liked Cam's a lot. Cam's was good. I think Jimmy kind of took it. 
Yeah. I mean, all three were good. Yeah. I don't know how old they were written. Jim seems like it was written like the day they shot it. Uh, mm. just because of his references, but like I, I, Jim, crazily enough, has put out two really good albums in two years. Yeah. Uh, I forget what the what, Capo. No, uh, wasted talent. And whatever the last one just was, and the deluxe on the last one he put out has 16 new tracks on it. And they're all good. Yeah, man. Jim's the best. It's like these guys have been doing this shit for years, man. Yeah, but J- like Jimmy in 2020 is the best artist in Dipset, which is crazy. When He, he had Ballin' and we thought that was it. And what was that, 05, yeah. 06? Yeah, was, yeah, 06, I believe. It was like, so we're talking horrible. basically 15 years later. He's the prominent artist out of this group. That's crazy. Um, but, yeah, this was such a good execution. I wish it was another brand other than Kith. But... <laughs> Yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm tired of taking losses on Shopify, Shopify sites. Um, that's one thing that yeah. I'm getting frustrated with because it's like it, like checking it, trying to check out. They, they kept hitting you with the – it was like errors on top of errors trying to check out. Like it was almost like, we, are you a robot? And you're like, no, I'm not. And then they're like, oh, there's a problem. And That sounds we, like something a robot would say. It, that's what they say. Yeah, and then when you finally get through, it's like you're, you're on this fucking – I like to call it the cue of death. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like the it's like the just wait your turn. It, it's very packed in here. We're trying to get you in, and then next thing you know, you get in finally, and it's like your size is sold out. And I was like, yo, man, I'm just tired of taking fucking losses on shit that I want through Shopify. I think it's the worst thing, and I think a guy like Ronnie needs to finally like. And I know that you know they don't give a fuck because the the merchandise will sell out immediately, but these like Kith has to take start taking a a method of uh, for s- these type of releases like uh like union did or like uh concepts yeah. did exactly it, it, it's just like you're just like you're inviting bots to fucking eat and in supreme too it's like but at the end of the day they don't give a fuck because the merchandise sells it's what keeps the shit relevant and keeps their 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 brand buzzing but it's like come on man like you it, people get a people frustrated man yeah, I yeah, it feels like it feels like Kith is kind of taking uh is being kind of lazy about, um, like they're this kind of rollout stuff because they've seen they've seen like two great examples this year of like solutions to bots as far as that goes, and there's like a bunch of I could like we could go on and on and on about like different skate shops and how many like different execution styles that like uh, to go against bots that I've seen uh, over the year. But it's like, come on, Kith. Like you're like you're you're the New York, you know, you're the New York guys. Come on, like let's let's get this shit together. I mean, one day we're gonna have a conversation about Kith and how that no one contended them generationally. Like they're like the new school, like classics. So like they're like the new, they're basically the new Supreme. If what if Supreme goes, who's left? It's Kith. Yeah. But it, they went uncontested, which I think we should talk about one day in length. But I mean, like, I mean, overall, there's great execution, though. The websites need work. We've said that on numerous occasions. But just, I mean, man, I, I, I can't take away some of the ways that they've executed, uh, not on the website, just overall. Like, getting Dipset in Madison Square Garden like that is crazy. I also want to point out that two weeks prior to this release, Chris made a joke about us being subset and then two weeks later kith has a dip set collab ronnie i know you're listening ronnie mm-hmm. fucking stop playing with us man send the us subset. some free shit subset we are, is subset. <laughs> we are subset <laughs> so uh, uh listen I, I was already having a bad fucking friday and then i'm, I'm like well at least saturday I'm going to be even more upset because I wanted the Sean Clivers and I missed out on those. Now those I'm getting to the point where I I think I know, I know we say that like this SB bubble has got to pop, but like for them to come out the gate and people want seven, $800, I'm like, it's not going to, it's not going to last. Those sneakers are like, they at max should be on the secondary market, $400. If that. Yeah. And I and I hate and I'm I'm just saying like I know the inflation SB hype they're pushing it, but like it it what justifies and warrants 
like people feeling like they got to push the shoe for eight hundred dollars on the secondary market. I'm just confused. Yeah, bro, it's because of dudes like you that want them. But at the same time, I'm not paying eight hundred dollars for them. Nah, but there's someone with the. I mean, it's like any other shoe that comes out. It's someone with your amount of enthusiasm that's in a different tax bracket will just pay for them. What I'm what I'm saying is, here's the thing, right? And I'm I'm gonna say this. I I think this year. I'm trying to think of maybe I bought maybe two pairs of sneakers resale. I think two. Mm-hmm. And one was an SB that I did pay a decent amount of money for. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's like this shit is not sustainable. You understand what I'm saying? Like it's just, yeah. it's, it's just to me, it's like it, it just doesn't add up because yeah. you have to realize like I feel like with – Okay. Yes, the the prices are a little inflated right now because sneakers pairs haven't come in, skate shops pairs haven't come in, and I feel like yeah, it's it's in people's minds. But I'm thinking like two to three months. Like if there's no government stimulus check that's really helping people out, these are gonna fucking dip a little bit. They're Christmas shoe, so Mm -hmm. you know what I mean. But I'm just like, how much? And I say this damn near every episode. How much longer? Is this fucking bubble going to... When is this shit going to pop? I'll tell you. Uh, I think they're going to put a cap on this when they put the Nike ID SB on there. Boom. Glad you asked, Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> we got you. Uh, if, if I was going to guess... Because we've been asking this question basically for the past four months. When yeah. is this going to pop? I think this is them giving us the needle. Honestly. And don't, don't forget, they did announce that they're going to drop like... 24 more SBs and dunks next year or something like that. Like they gave us a lineup of like a, like a rough lineup of what, what's coming out. Mm. Um, and obviously it's like, it's me like, you know, alternative colorways. We didn't really get into collabs yet, but still I, yeah, I think what Chris is saying is right. This is, this is kind of going to be the end of the, the dunk craze. I don't, I don't think so. Cause you know why? Because I feel like if, when they do go to Nike ID, yeah. They're, they're not going to give you anything premium. Right. And I still think that they're going to make them so limited that, you know what I mean? It's just like. It, they will ah. for sure be limited. Um, yeah. What I will say, though, Al, is um, there's been numerous shoes that's come out this year that have had numerous lookalikes. Um, now, I know color blocking is limited with IDs. You can't do anything you want. It's not a bespoke. You know what I mean? But. They are giving you the ability to make the lookalike that you want. Yeah. So if you missed out on any SB this year, now granted, if you want to say you want Strange Loves, you're not going to be able to get that velvet, but you can color block it to be close enough. And I think that's where the ending really is. Seriously. Everybody gets a leather version of whatever shoe you want. Yeah, everyone's going to get like the bum material version of whatever shoe it is, but it proved, I think the, the mocha ones was yeah. proof that it's really viable that everyone's cool with the lookalikes especially if it's an id because an id you could spin it to like however you want it you know what i mean like oh i like you know i like that shoe so i use that color blocking which is nice to me you know what i mean you don't even got to say it's a lookalike you could say like it was inspo for like your shoe yeah mm-hmm. i mean because i mean how else what are people gonna do that's it there's not gonna be too many people this is the thing bro People don't know what they want, which is why they go to Hype Beast, High Snobiety, Complex to tell them what they want, right? And this year has been a perfect uh, layout and reference to exactly what this is. You see Travis Scott wear a whatever SB. You go to StockX, you can see that immediately rise. You have dates of posts where you can reference on StockX. You can see where the height goes, you know what I mean, of the price on that. This is it. You have a list of SBs that came out this year that no one got. Yeah. Nike goes, okay, here. Here's, here's the references for all the shoes you guys didn't get. Here's the materials you got. Now have fun. That's it. We have yeah. the needle. This bubble's about to pop. Ooh. I, listen, I want to live in the world that Chris lives in where the bubble's going to pop. I really want to believe in it. I, I'm gonna, I, I have my doubts about it, but I will believe in you, Chris. I think I, I'm hoping that this bubble pops. Now, and when I say bubble pop, I don't mean, like, it, the shoe is going to die, the silhouettes no one's going to buy anymore. I'm just saying that, like, once we have the ability to get close enough, 
once we have the ability to kind of make something that someone's going to be able to like look at and give us the nod, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's it. And then it's on to whatever next silhouette's going to get made hot somehow. It's going to be Blazers. Blazers might be up there, man. I mean, low key Blazers have been in the background for a long time. I don't know how Nike like markets these silhouettes to pop so hard. Like, I feel like the dunk came out of nowhere. It was like mid 18 where that shit kind of started bubbling. And then, yeah. um, you know, I think it was the Travis SBs and the strange loves that really set the wave for the rest of the year. Yep. But I mean, it, how else do they end this era by that's the only way you end it going like, all right, do whatever you want. Well, no, I mean, there's listen, there's still take uh, 2021 is still going to be pretty big for, for SBs. Yeah. I mean, Oh yeah, of course. I'm not saying it's not going to be. So, I mean, no, but what I'm saying is, like, like do, do whatever you want. It's not going to be do whatever you want. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's still going to be a lot of limitations. And like I said, they're going to cap it. It's going to be still, I think, so hard to get a, an ID of a dunk. You understand what I'm saying? So, it's like. Yeah, yeah I, I think I, it's I, also going to be hard to get a dunk ID. So, I think all that's going to do is just continue to create the 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 wave. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like Luke is showing right now for the for the viewers. 2021 there's going to be so many um yeah like dunks that are still just limited and coming out i think i just saw earlier today that they're doing uh at 2021 they're doing a a court purple uh jpac type jordan uh oh, I did see that. yeah so you know i just think it. that it's going to be more manageably priced i think issues like you're having with the cleavers are going to go away for the most part Unless it's going to have a Travis logo on it or some other crazy shit. Yeah, you think the, the collabs are going to be the... Yeah, the hype collabs are the hype collabs. Those transcend silhouette, and it's more about names than, it, you know what I mean? Like, God, this yeah. is so good. <laughs> so, yeah, sure, like, cool. We're going to get, like, more stuff like this coming out. I'm not saying these aren't going to come out and these they're not still going to push the shit, but I'm just saying that, like, the the inflation, I think, will be over. So you're thinking you're thinking we're gonna get back to the days where you could go to a store and you can you, there there will be a dunk on the on the display. You think we're gonna get that to that point again? Well, I think it depends on when the pandemic sort of allows us to do that. But yeah, I'm not if, if it's gr shit. Yeah, I don't know, man. I think it's it's because the 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 people have been so hungry for dunks for so. So long and they're gonna they're everybody's so scared that they're gonna lose them again that they're gonna be like oh i just gotta buy up all of them all right well okay let's 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 review for a second we agree that the market is not oversaturated but it's getting there right yes um i yeah I don't, i'm not gonna say it's oversaturated but i think what 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 the issue is is that the sbs for the most part are extremely limited they're uh -huh. we're gonna say they're limited yeah, yeah. And yeah. the distribution of the sneakers can be very sketchy. Yeah. It, so when when you have when you when they're limited, and then the distribution is like this skate shop, and there's you know in your city you may have one skate shop, so there's twelve pairs, or you know if that you know, and and there's you know like you look at like the the orange label. Uh, uh, like the you know this where, where only the skate shops get them you're talking like maybe five six thousand pairs nationwide so it, it just when you have that so if there's that if there's such a demand for them and there's such limited supply you're gonna have old collectors new collectors you're gonna have people that just want in mm -hmm. and it's just like fucking the game man it's like but then it's like everyone acts like you know like you get a pair like like the clivers and then all of a sudden, you're trying to sell them for nine hundred dollars. You're like, I got the the hot SBs, and it's like, there's a. Pro and then from what I hear, you know, Nike is also they might be taking the power out of the skate shops and trying to do more of uh, more sneaker uh, SB releases. Oh, that's big. That's big because so, that's how a lot of these sneaker shops stay open. You know, yeah. well, I mean, like, obviously not like they, they make their daily sales, but they get their eyes on them. Like, I, uh, you know, hype, the hype train is with them because of this. Yeah. Like you, like some people wouldn't know some of these shops if it wasn't for the fact that they have like, yeah, now I you're mean, following them on Instagram, you know, skaters, week. skaters will always stay local. Uh, you know, they'll be with their shop 
whatever, yeah. where depending on where you are, whatever, like skaters will always go, but skaters can't maintain the rent. No. You got to have um, like, the weird guy who's like, I will spend $800,000 here if you can con- secure me four dunks this year. You know, I'm yeah. not saying that always happens, but there's always one weird guy who's offering a shit ton of money for him. Now, Al, I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I know like the, the, I mean, this also is the problem with Supreme when they sold again. Everyone had this conversation about like, oh, well, it's, uh, it's dead. Well, it's like, you know, things will remain sort of the same, a constant amount of limited, kind of what uh-huh. you're saying, right? But it, it's just going to like, there's no custom Supreme shirt. And I know that, you know, like we said already, just to reiterate that it's going to be a limited amount. But like when they say like, okay, you can have your own if you can get it. Yeah. I mean, that's just going to devalue a lot of the other ones is what I'm saying. So I think the market will go down. I don't think the, the market respect, just to maybe use a, a weird term, will mm-hmm. go away. But I think the market value of the SB will go down. Dude, if I get a if I get my hands on one of these customs, I think I'm gonna do. I found a trick online to kind of suedeify the leather. They were doing it with like the court purple 2.0s. Somebody did like a suede kind of custom where they like you take uh, you take a bunch of alcohol alcohol wipes and then you wipe it down and it starts to like fray the leather and it starts to look like suede. I think I do that and then I try to add a fat tongue because I remember being a kid and we used to do that all the time where we take regular dunks and we put fat tongues on them and then sometimes with the with the fatter tongues on the sbs my friends who were skating didn't like them so much so they would take out some of the the stuffing dude huh. i would just love to get, like get my hands on that shit and just start customizing how would you make them fat tongues you would open up the tongue and stuff shit in there you open yeah you open up the tongue and you put like a foam material inside oh huh. yeah yeah it's a, a lot of people like uh, uh what do you call it chris in the discord by the way if you're not in the discord please join our discord link in the bio uh, you could you could ask Chris Ramirez. I'm pretty sure he used to do. He had like a couple of pairs of SBs that he used to take out the lining of because he used to complain that like they were too fat and they would start to hurt the the top of his foot. So huh. like when he was like skating, so he he like loosened up the the material a little bit. Yo man, skaters again, bro. Skaters were the first kids to pop the bubble. Yeah, on Air Maxes, I think. Mm-hmm. Kids in my high school would do that all the time, but only skaters did it. Skaters, it's crazy. Um, shout out to all the skate kids. Uh, they're weird people. <laughs> but they're, they're yeah, just they're weird people who do weird shit that nobody's supposed to do. Um, I, you know, I want to talk about something that we uh, we kind of teased last week. Uh, the there was a um, uh, image of the supposedly the new shattered backboards coming out in twenty twenty one. Ooh, and I oh yeah based on the image that I saw, I do not like them. And I keep saying that, you know, Gentry Humphrey, man, is he is fucking, it's not cool what he does, man. Like Shattered Backwards had a great, the first two had an amazing story. They, they, they flowed. And then we were like, we're going to get Chicago. We're going to get Shattered Backboard threes, but they're going to be teased. Like they're going to use like the, the, band yeah. like uh, sh- uh blocking and then all of a sudden we get these fucking these these reynolds rap fucking <laughs> disgusting you know uh patent leatherish type of shattered bag which weren't even they didn't the even vaseline have vaseline ones were what people were calling them for yes. a minute. i and, love these <laughs> and now we get these like the, you know this upcoming retro that you know it's a tease and it's disgusting and i uh, it's so upsetting man. i love those i think i love them a lot i think those are which, great which one the white and then because like for these the, ones the for four, the i guess the fours are we're gonna call them yeah for the listeners it's basically so um on the upper it's more of like it's got like the orange hits and then the the uh the air jordan flaps are um are white and then uh, the, what do you call it? The lacing, the lining on the lacing is, uh, is all black. And then the swoosh is black. And then the They're bottom. They're shattered white toes. Yeah. Um, listen, Lawrence, as far as like, as like I, we've seen some fucking misses from Jordan Brand for a while. And this one is not as bad. I think it's because the, third, the 3.0 was so bad that like our expectations have been lowered. I will also give Lawrence some credit as far as color blocking. This is uh, a catastrophe. This is not, <laughs> I don't actually, I don't think I've seen a Jordan color block like this. I, 
I can't remember one where that you would just have like the lace locks and then that one that the toe box panel. Yeah. Black and then the swoosh black and nothing else. That's crazy. There's another one here that looks like basically the mocha one, but with uh with the orange instead of the brown. That one I like more. I love these though, L. I don't know. I I get right, where you're you. coming from, <laughs> but the, these are gorgeous. The threes are garbage. These fours yeah. though, if these are the ones that are actually coming out, like I'm all with these. Oh man, listen, I'm I'm not really a Jordan One guy anyway, so I'm probably not gonna get them. But uh, Chris, I'll help you get them. Yeah, help help me. <laughs> <laughs> Help me get my size. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to fall asleep for this one too? No. <laughs> and you know what? Actually, to follow up on that, I finally got my Fragment 3s. The boy did it. I'm fucking wearing them. Hey. Oh, hey. Hey, look everybody. at this guy. Congratulations. Look, I, how long did that take me? Like three months? Yeah. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter how long it took you. It's, you finally got it, you know, and that's the that's the the main win right there, man. You know, that's what this podcast and and what we do is about. It's about fucking, you know, getting the things you want and and winning. Yeah, man. Wait, hopefully, under retail. Hopefully. Sometimes, sometimes you don't win under retail. Sometimes you win over retail. I mean, sometimes you just fucking, you know, you just don't even look at, you know, your, your credit card statement just pay it off you know when you, you know, just pay it all off <laughs> sometimes you just put money in an envelope you don't you don't really try to figure out what, what the minimum balance is you're just going hopefully this is enough nah it's funny it's funny one of my one of my credit cards is like through my bank so i just like whenever i, I pay something i just i just take my money from my checking account and just pay the credit card off so i because i'm like like this i just i get like i'm t- like i'm just fucking i just need confirmation emails I've that's done my that. problem that's my problem in life I'm too many confirmation emails I feel you, shit. dog. I even sometimes when you when you get a W, you get an L as well, like mm-hmm. which just happened to me. So I uh, somebody gave me a really great deal on a pair of Atlas SBs mm-hmm. on eBay. Some guy was selling them for like three eighty five. I said three thirty. Uh, it was like an offer system. Uh, I already legit checked them. Everybody was like, "These are good." I had like the green light. Tags were good. Uh, I gave him 330 and then he was like, nah, man, 365. And then I was like, but these are for the toe though. You know, I told Mm -hmm. him it was for the toe though. For the toes. It took a day and then he responded and he said, $300, Merry Christmas. And then I was like, oh, fucking yeah. (laughs) So I fucking, I went for him. I got him. And then I told my girlfriend, I was like, babe, you're never going to believe this. Remember those shoes that I was telling you about (laughs) that you fucking don't want to hear about? Well, I got them for a really good deal. And then she goes, oh, and I'm like, why? What? I got them for cheap. I got them for like, this is lower than, than resale. And she was like, I got you those for Christmas. That's funny. <laughs> so now I got two pairs of Atlas SBs. But wait, what did she pay for them? She paid. I don't know what she paid for them, <laughs> but I'm very mad at Yo. her. because I, I told her, I was like, don't buy me sneakers. Don't, I'm like, I'm going to take care of me when it comes to sneakers. Don't buy me sneakers. And what does she do? She goes and buys me exactly the sneakers I wanted. <laughs> which is the wrong. She did exactly what she was supposed to, which is the wrong thing. Which is the wrong, <laughs> wrong thing. <laughs> exactly. So now I got two pairs. Of SB- I'm, I don't know if I'm going to keep the other one. I don't know if I'm going to sell. Honestly, I'm thinking about getting rid of one of them and trying to trade for JPAC Chicago's. You know what's hard about having... The hard thing about being a sneakerhead and having people support you in this horrible habit yeah, is that they can't help you do it. So, like, your girlfriend did the wrong thing because she got – now you doubled up, which is yeah. – in some regards, cool. Some regards, bad. But, like, I would never trust anyone I know to buy the correct sneakers that aren't fake for a good price. Right. Mm-hmm. Off the right person. Right. And the other thing is, like, I just don't want her spending that much on sneakers. I I understand. I get that. I would much rather she just bought, like, all the clothes to go with it, you know? Right. Yeah, she bought me the trip. (laughs) Yeah, she gave me, like, like a hoodie and a fucking pair of jeans or something. Uh I would have been cool with that. Or, you know, or, like, the Atlas crew neck. I would have been fine with that. Anything under $400, you know? I don't want her spending that much. I don't want her to know how much I spend on these damn things. You Trust know? me, I, I understand that. I get that. 
mm-hmm. it's like I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it a lot. I just I wish you didn't appreciate me that much. <laughs> Did you guys see the meme that was going around of someone going like, "Mom, go buy the Sakai's, the the Sakai's." And then she oh, sent yeah. a screenshot of the Gotham, and it was the the ninety five. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, "Yay, I won!" <laughs> he's, like, yeah. he's like, "No, it's exactly what we're talking about." Yeah, like they can't. I know. <laughs> It's the reason why I won't let her put, I refuse to let her put in for raffles and shit for me. It's because I don't want her seeing this side of, of the ugly side of this, of the sneaker podcast that I do. You know what? You can't even say like brands. You can't even give them a brand because they might buy the wrong thing. Like imagine if you like the hundreds and you were like, Hey, just grab me anything by the hundreds. I love that brand. And they come through with the Britney Spears shit. Yo, on it. (laughs) All right. For those who don't know, the hundreds just put out a Britney Spears collaboration. And I mean, for one thing, what the fuck? Why? Uh, <laughs> for another thing, this is. Wow. I, honestly, I wouldn't be. Uh, I don't trust my girl enough to, to get the, the right Britney Spears hundred. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. Yo, I think Luke, the- though, you know what, though? If you get the Kith Force ones, you can match <laughs> That I can match. Life. I can match this fleece, orange and blue Britney Spears, uh, uh, sweater with, with the Air Force Ones. Yo, this is this collab is crazy. This collab is crazy because it's it's. It, I mean, it's pretty much all of Britney's. I don't. I I want to say iconic moments. I I don't know. Uh, I like the snake tea. I like the snake tea. The snake tea. I I, I like. I Yo, if, if anyone wears this, I'm going to have to look at them and go like, dog, I don't know about you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, I'm going to need to like age check all these photos. Like how old was she when she was in these photos? Well, I'll tell you right now, this sweater with the with the first album's uh, list, she was like 14 in that one. That's not legal. <laughs> oh, no. That's not street legal. That's not street legal wear right there. No. Street legal wear? <laughs> not that one. Not for sure. Oh, uh, I mean, like, I don't know who they did this collab for. I don't know if the hundreds changed their demo to be uh, girls who grew up with Britney, but it's I, white I, girls mm-hmm. and the gays, bro. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't know, if, I don't know bro. It's not even like I'm not even trying to be like disrespectful. If if tell me not, this is <laughs> would love this shit. It's 30-year-old women and, yeah, I guess gay dudes. Gay dudes age. who are saying, yes, queen, free Britney. That, that's <laughs> who this is for. <laughs> Britney's a hot commodity right now. Her, she's getting no yeah, money from I, this. Luke, Her dad she is not a hot commodity money. right now. There's not Luke, a – went. how is she a hot commodity right hashtag now? Hashtag free Britney, bro. <laughs> she's at this hype. Right? There's hype around this. <laughs> By the, if this was July, I I might agree with nah, you. But bro, right now, still, listen, listen, they're still they're still thumping around. They know that they they know that Britney's not free yet. Wait, where is she locked up? Bro, you don't know about this. Her no. dad owns her. Her dad yeah. has control of her entire estate. Yeah. Oh, because she started off uh, not streetwear legal. Right, because she started off not streetwear legal, and then she <laughs> shaved her head and went a little, you know. She had a little bit of a mental breakdown. Yeah, so yeah, she yeah. did. I remember that. So basically, the dad was like, "She's not fit to handle her money. I am." And some people are like, "Hey, free Britney!" And then there's other people who are like, "I listen. I don't know, man. Look at what she does on TikTok." <laughs> <laughs> the French guy has an opinion. Yeah, you know, just I'm saying, just you know, <laughs> look at what she does. Look at these. You know, she's gonna get no money from this. Good for Britney's parents. We keep going down. What are the full collection? All right, so there's like four tees, couple, yeah. not even, they're like quarter zip hoodies. I don't know, like, quarter who wears zip. a half zip hoodie? Uh, I don't know. I don't like that. <laughs> mm. We've, got, we've got the when your dreams are fading, I'll be waiting. I do like the 90s, uh, like, uh, cyber font. Yeah. <laughs> God, that does bring you back. That they did nail that. Um, makes me think of Tamagotchis and all that. Yeah, they did a yeah. good job there. Uh huh. Did the swirl? I mean, bro. The jerseys are probably the worst thing. <laughs> this is all you, Doug. No. Spears ninety nine. Spears ninety nine. I don't know, bro. 
I don't know. I don't. I can't have spears on my back, <laughs> and them not actually be. No, sharp but you say, nah, this is Goldberg spear, not Britney spear. Goldberg spear. Goldberg spear <laughs> with a flower on the side. It's too suspect, buddy. It's a very suspect collection. Lawrence, this was gonna be your Christmas gift. Oh no, no, no! <laughs> oh, imagine, yo. No. no. You no, imagine you handing you your homie. You said you wanted. To- Lawrence, we got you the the photo tee. You said you wanted the photo tee. We got you the, the black photo tee of Britney. Isn't that what you wanted? No. It's Britney, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I take this all back. I will wear that just so I can walk around and say it's Britney, bitch, all day. <laughs> that I will do. That's funny. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, uh, that is, shit is so funny. Uh, that is the one of the funniest collabs. Up to date. I think ever. <laughs> the hundreds and Brit is Brit. Britney's not even from West Coast. She's like from Alabama or some weird shit, isn't she? Yeah, she's from somewhere weird. I don't know enough about Britney. I do know Ariana Grande is getting married, and I'm upset about that. But you know, it's whatever. It's yeah. Much. I think. Listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it like for the listeners. I'm giving it about three months. She's gonna cheat on him, and she's gonna cheat on him with me. <laughs> Ariana Grande. We're talking about Ariana Grande, not Britney Spears. Ariana Grande. Uh, Just want to make that clear, everybody. Uh, I mean, look, if 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 things we talk about come to fruition on this podcast, let's just have our fingers crossed for you, there, buddy. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Um, dude. I do want to. What? Sorry, if Travis can say that he's gonna make a seltzer and then he fucking does it, then I can say. That I'm gonna break up this engagement between Ariana Grande and whatever his face is. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I do actually. Okay, I was I wasn't gonna go there, but I do kind of want to talk about the Travis Seltzer because this is the first time since I bought that. Pre- Lawrence, this was before Luke, but do you remember when we talked about buying the Travis merch when it first came out because he gave you pre-sale option for the tickets to see the concert? Yes. And then we. I think we each bought a hoodie, and then we didn't go to the concert. Uh-huh. <laughs> this is the first time since then I'm, like, down with a Travis. Because they don't make 7% seltzer. They're usually five, so I'm, like, all with this. This is, this is right up Chris's alley uh, as, like, uh, just a scumbag. That's all it is. <laughs> Yo, I like seltzer. My girl got me into the seltzers. I'm down with it. They got a pineapple, a lime. Was that a cranberry or strawberry? strawberry. Like, yeah, I'm with this, bro. 7%. Dog, give me, give me uh, a, a six pack of each. Lawrence, can we get a uh, can we get a seltzer review? Sure, I, I I mean I review hard kombucha, so I might as well <laughs> review some seltzer while I'm at it. Uh, you can have a, this one gets. Can, I mean, okay, wait. You can literally have your candle lit. Yes, it's lit. Candle. Yeah. You could be drinking your cacti, right? Wearing your Travis merch, whichever mm-hmm. one you want to wear, while playing a PS Five, right? Mm-hmm. He's he's almost covered your like whole day. So basically, there was a time, uh, Lawrence. You're gonna kind of shut down for this, but there was a there was a time I saw a video once where somebody went through and tried to figure out how many. Uh, how how much stuff you could actually like if you could live off of Evangelion uh, merch and for how long you could. So oh, Evangelion yeah. being a very popular anime, Lawrence, uh-huh. basically is it's the Travis Scott of animes, meaning that they have hoarded out their property to literally everybody. They have instant curries. They have toothpaste. They have razor blades. They have everything. And somebody figured it out, and you can literally live about 75 days before you would die from just eating the shitty instant curry. Oh, my God. Yeah. Jesus Christ. There's literally, like, there's a million things that you could get off of about Evangelion. You could wear Evangelion shoes. You could wear Evangelion shirts, jeans, whatever. They have it all. Uh, Officially licensed, too. Not even, like, you know... But I would love to do that one day where we figure out how long somebody could live off of Travis Scott, Reese's Puffs, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and Cacti Juice. Yo, he got – if you exclude dinner and it eat, like, that McDonald's, like, meal, even though it's not, like, around, if that's your 
So you have the Reese's for breakfast. Right. The McDonald's for lunch, and you just have a bunch of cacti seltzer for dinner. (laughs) 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 So you got then you got your PS5 that you could play. (laughs) Right. Does he have an umbrella if it rains? You can you can put your chicken nugget body pillow over your head. But he got you covered, bro. He he got he got t shirts, but he also got hoodies if it's cold. He got jackets. (laughs) Yo, Trav got you all day and night. All day and night. You could literally live off of Travis Scott merch. That's hilarious. Damn. You just have to be eating at McDonald's a lot. That's a lot of Mickey D's, bro. That's a lot of Mickey D's. You're going to have to change out. You're going to have to buy a, another size <laughs> fucking <laughs> Travis Scott merch every month. <laughs> oh, damn. Ooh. Oh, that was funny. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> You know, just imagine somebody just with all the Travis Scott shit. <laughs> there's one person, right? You know how there's like every every like major collectible has like one guy that has all of it? Right. There's like the New Balance guy who is on Sneaker Freaker. Friend yeah, there's the Supreme yeah, guy. Him. There's the there's even a Reebok Pump guy, yeah. DJ Senator. There's got to be a Travis guy. Unless oh. it's just Travis Scott. <laughs> That'd be so. <laughs> is Travis, Travis the Travis Scott guy? Is, so, is the actual Travis Scott guy? <laughs> Fuck me, that's funny. Oh, okay, I don't really, I don't know where to go from here. <laughs> I, I don't know, guys. Let's uh, hold on. I, I think, I think we were good for the episode. Yeah. Do you guys have any? Uh, let's let's do hypeless heat. <laughs> yeah, hypeless heat. Um. I, you, next week, I want to talk about the auto, the auto Elise 11s. I don't want to leave that one aside. And we also got to talk about, I mean, the big one, Sneaker of the Year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Definitely. We got any, we got any, any taste, tastes for I mean, we got to talk about Chunkies, obviously. We got to talk about the Dior's. We got to talk about what You else? know what, Lawrence, I was talking to Luke off mic before you got into the Zoom thing, and I was saying that, like, I don't know if we can't have no exceptions. Cause it's already starting like a biggie, like who's your favorite rapper? And people say like Biggie, Pac, and people are doing that this year with the you like you can't count count the Dior's for some reason. Like I know mm-hmm. we kind of talked about that, but like I think I was even the ones like how can you count the Dior's? Like you couldn't buy them or whatever. But that came out this year. I think we gotta like lose th- that weird criteria mm-hmm. and be like those count. Yeah, they do okay. count. For I feel like for some reason we had another conversation where like we were saying like they don't count but they should. I think I was even the one that said they don't count, but like yeah. I'm redacting that. Yeah, I respect that. We can redact that. We should, you know, hype obviously very big factor in that the rollout. I don't know what else. Uh, well, let's, well, let's uh, yeah. I mean, we I'm got just trying unions. to figure out the criteria. We got a bunch of stuff. We got a bunch of stuff. We got a. And I think we should definitely uh, spend a lot of time breaking that down because I, I did, because there's there's some things I definitely want to talk about in terms of like Dior's and shit like that. So, yeah, yes, yeah. So we'll do that. Um, hypeless heat though. Mm-hmm. Hypeless heat. Hypeless heat. Um, I don't know who's got what ready, but uh, once this loads, I'll be able to go. But if you got yours, Luke, you can go. Uh, let's see. Uh, um, bu- 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 I do have one. Let me see. I promise I was prepared. <laughs> so this week, I just don't have the picture up. Hold on, where is it? This one right here. I'm going to choose. Damn, I don't have it here. But uh. I wanted to choose the extra butter ASICs that are coming that were coming out, the fighter jet ones. Uh, this one didn't really get a lot of hype behind it, and I believe they're selling on resale for about the same. Uh, what I like about the shoe, uh, you know, very much like that bomber uh, aesthetic. But then I found out uh, extra butter did like a little thing on the uh, on the shoe itself, where it actually has a double lacing system. So we have like our standard. Uh, lacing system that you would have on any other shoe with just like a you know regular eyelets and then this one also has this like over over the tongue kind of aesthetic I don't even know how to describe it but it's very interesting uh, I enjoy like that gray color it's very neutral oh, and they tap Davies to be the model and they tap yeah. Davies to be the model uh, extra butter 
deserved a little bit of love on that one. We didn't really talk about it our, ourselves, so I wanted to bring it up and uh, give it a little bit more attention. Uh, and you know what? I'll even double down and say Extra Butter doesn't really get a lot of credit as far as their collabs. They do a lot of good storytelling. I, I haven't even seen that shoe, but I seem cool just based off the visuals there. But they're really good about storytelling. I really mm -hmm. like the way they, uh, where they grab inspiration for collabs. Yes, really good shoe. Um, I'll go next, I suppose. Uh, what am I doing here? Did I forget how to do this? No, I got it. So recently, my uh, my actual great friend Frank the Butcher did uh, Complex's podcast. Ooh, and it, even though I knew every story that he was telling, I did um, get reminded of the forums that he did. So I want I want to talk about these forums for a second. These were actually so not only is forums kind of coming back, Adidas is trying to push them as a skate shoe now. I think we've kind of discussed this a little bit. Yeah. Um, but these were like a weird collab that like even Adidas didn't even like want to do. So Frank was always talking about how he wanted the crest. The crest had like some significance. I'm I'm not going to go through the whole story, but the crest had some significance. He he, t he tried to get Adidas to like pull up the old references. They couldn't find any sample. It's like they pretended these didn't even exist. So he had to call Clark Kent and basically he got it done. But um, post this collab, I helped Frank with some visuals like, I don't even know how long ago, um, years ago though. So I just want to shout him out for these. These are a great shoe. I don't think he got a lot of credit on these, even though I love them. It took a lot of work to get there. And uh, that's my hypo team for this week. Nice. Yeah, these are gorgeous. Those are like, I like that. What was that suede material on it? Yeah, they're super nice. They're nice. clean as shit. Man. Yeah, I like those. Uh, for me, I'm going to go New Balance uh, 574s. Ooh, 574. The Modern Balance. Wow. Yes. Uh, yeah, dude. You can, it's fucking uh, classic, like, uh, chill. Uh, yeah, I think that's a good, it's a good model. Oh, let me see. Got it right here. Yeah, you can't go wrong with a 574. These are also known, for, I believe these are the ones that are featured in Crazy Stupid Love with Steve Carell and, and Ryan Gosling, where they were touted as like, uh, like Ryan Gosling was like, oh, this is the 574s. Are you Steve Jobs? Are you Steve Jobs? And he threw him out the window. But now the New, ba New Balance 574s get a lot of love because, God, they're a very simple, clean shoe. Can't yeah. go wrong with them. Yeah, those up there is like the goat silhouette over there right now there you go nice um i think that's it do we have any final thoughts before we bid our listeners adieu uh nothing oh enjoy your christmas everybody merry christmas happy hanukkah shabbat shalom to our jewish listeners uh yeah shabbat shalom to our jewish listeners. kwanzaa every kwanzaa. all the holidays kwanzaa. we appreciate all y'all yeah, happy man. holidays happy holidays y'all enjoy uh enjoy your loved ones enjoy yourselves uh, uh make sure luke and literally i'm gonna put you on blast buddy luke literally before the podcast he rang my bell he showed up to my door and he handed me a present and it was this fujiwara fragment book um literally buddy you threw me so off guard with this i have your gift here i didn't even think to give it to you but thank you this was the no gift problem, i got man. from luke want to give him some clout yeah. on that and uh and then he knocked on my door and gave me this amazing uh sneaker uh, uh collab uh book uh by elizabeth uh Simulhack. uh so i and you know i, I appreciate I, if i if if i wasn't so depressed about fantasy football i would cry uh, for <laughs> the book but you guys are i really appreciate both of you guys for real and um yeah man yeah, that's my guy right there come on yeah you guys are amazing and uh yeah no, not to get sloppy, but like we close to three years doing this luke you haven't been here the whole time me and l have some had some up and downs doing this but like appreciate you know it. Yeah, especially with the pandemic going on, there's not much to do. This is just something that I get to, you know, smile every week and do. So this is just great. Yeah, exactly. This I just wanted to give you guys <clears throat> something because you guys have given me so much this year. It's been a lot of fun. My Thank guy. You. Um, you know, again, happy holidays, everybody. We appreciate you. Uh, and like I just said, we're close to three years. So these guys who've been listening since, like, early eps, man, I uh, – Thank you, and I'm sorry for a lot of the <laughs> shit that you had to listen to early on. My God, they were cool for us to like learn and get our footing, but like, man, you guys are troopers for just sticking from early on. Um, Definitely. 
And with that, I will say follow Lawrence at LZD325 on all platforms. Trovisus on all platforms. Not that Cheney on all platforms. Sub Podcast NYC. You know, we got the, um, the phone number that you can leave us a voicemail. We got the uh, email. You can email us questions. We got the Discord, which is like the main hub for all our listeners. I mean, like a bunch of you guys are scattered all over the place. I know Discord's kind of like a weird thing. You don't, you, know, you don't want a new social media platform. But once you get on here, this isn't like some regular shit. Like you'll be using this all the time. Definitely. <clears throat> and with that, we will see you guys next week. Peace. Peace.